Hi all, this will be a quick tutorial on getting Adobe Premiere Pro set up to edit um, VR video. So we're going to start a new project, give it a name, and put it in a location that you um, will remember and have control over. Hit OK. And um, the first thing we want to do is make a file new sequence. Um, and under the available presets, there is a folder full of VR presets. They come in either monoscopic, uh, which is two-dimensional, or stereoscopic, which is 3D. Um, depending on what you used in your uh, VR shoot or what kind of footage you are going to assemble, you got to pick the right answer here. Um, I'm going to be doing monoscopic 360 video. Um, it so happens that the camera that I'm using, the Views uh, XR, doesn't shoot in any of these resolutions, but it's easy enough to change um, one of these presets to fit the resolution of your camera. Um, I'm also going to be bringing in audio that was recorded on a Zoom Ambisonic VR mic, so I want to use one of the presets that says Ambisonics. So I'll choose this um, 4096 preset give it a name um vr class demo sequence and uh now under the project tab um i should have a uh, vr class sequence that has in the audio tracks four channel audio that's the um, ambisonic audio so next i'm going to import some sample footage um, I have a 360 video and the audio recorded from the ambisonic mic. I'm going to drag those in and then if I put the video on my timeline, it's going to complain that the sequence settings don't match. So I can hit change sequence settings and they should now match up with my camera's resolution. We can confirm that by going up to sequence, sequence settings. And it has indeed changed our preset from the 4096 to the 5760 by 2880 that the Views XR shoots in. Um, the other thing to point out in sequence settings for VR, just in case you don't have this set or your footage didn't pull it in for some reason, down under VR properties, the projection should say equirectangular. Layout should match either monoscopic or stereo, depending on your footage. And um, the horizontal captured view needs to be 360 um, for 360 footage or 180 for 180 footage. Vertical should always say 180. So when you look at equirectangular footage, um, it's stretching uh, a 360 sphere out into a rectangle, like a projection, like a map projection. And um, as you can see on the top and bottom, it gets pretty warped. Um, and the left and right sides should wrap around. Um, so if we want to see this footage in um, a, a setup that's a little more like looking through a VR headset, we can do that by going to the button editor, which is the little plus sign on the um, program window. And then finding this button, the Toggle VR Video Display, it looks like a um, person's head wearing a VR mask, or at least it looks like a, uh, a circle with a square over it. You can click and drag that down into your um, controls here, and then when you click it, um, it shows you a portion of your full display, and you can tog toggle this on and off. Um, I like to customize this though because I don't really want to look at square video and I don't find these um, panning controls to be particularly useful. So I'm going to right click on this window and go down to VR video. First I'm going to remove show controls which just makes my image take up a little more space and I can still click and drag in this image to move around and preview. I'm also going to right click VR video and go to settings. Um, I like to make the horizontal view 180 rather than the default 108. This just um, makes it look a little more like traditional video that I'm used to editing, and I think it uses my Premiere UI just a little better. 
If you have a VR headset attached to the computer you're editing with, you can go to Edit Preferences Playback and make sure that Adobe Immersive Environment is um, checked and set up as a playback video device. Uh, that's going to allow you to um, use the Adobe Immersive Environment to look in your headset and actually see this whole 360 video while you're editing it. In terms of ambisonic audio, under Edit, Preferences, and then Timeline, um, we want to make sure that multi-channel mono media is listed as adaptive rather than any of these other options that might be the default. We want this set on adaptive. Um, and finally, when you're about to bring in that um, four-channel ambisonic audio, you want to right-click on that file and make sure to modify audio channels. Just be sure that this is set to adaptive. Four active channels per clip, but only one audio clip. Um, sometimes when you bring in a WAV file that's four channel, it will treat it as four separate mono audio clips, which is not how we want to handle this. Um, you also want to see this kind of diagonal line of checkboxes where uh, channel one corresponds to channel one, two to two, three to three, and four to four. When all of that is good to go, you can hit OK and drag your ambisonic audio to your timeline. Um, and to confirm that it's worked as we, as we want it to, it should just look like one track, not four separate mono tracks taking up four uh, audio tracks. You can select both of these, right click and choose synchronize using audio and hit OK and Premiere is going to uh, compare the waveforms and maybe if you slated or clapped or whatever um, as we did you will uh, have a really easy time syncing. Um, if it fails to sync um, you can go the old-fashioned way and try to line up the waveforms yourself and nudge. Um, but nine times out of ten, if, if you recorded some decent audio, Premiere should be able to sync it. So I'm going to mute the Views camera audio track because it's not going to sound nearly as good. And I will have my Ambisonic audio track. The last thing that we're going to need to be able to do to preview Ambisonics um, as we're editing is under Window, and audio track mixer, not audio clip mixer, audio track mixer um, for this project. If we throw a, a binauralizer preview effect on our entire master mix track, um, we'll be able to hear the uh, ambisonic um, effect of uh, sound that is all around us in front and back or above or below. Um, with this preview on. So what you have to do is find this tiny little show hide effects and sends um, arrow and twirl it down. It's up in the top left of the audio track mixer. And once that's twirled down, you have um, effect inserts. Uh, if you're familiar with Pro Tools, this is going to look familiar to you. Um, we're going to click one and under special, we want the binauralizer ambisonics. This is going to allow us um, to preview the uh, ambisonic effect in normal headphones. This effect will be all but unhearable in monitor speakers, but in headphones, um, the binauralizer is going to uh, preview that ambisonic um, effect. Now, I keep saying preview because we need to remember to remove this effect when we go to export our finished product. We have to remove it because the binauralizer, if it stays on, will make the finished product not be 4-channel ambisonic, even if we try to export it that way. Um, so we'll hear it here uh, correctly with the preview on, and then we'll remove it before the export. When we go to export, we're going to select our timeline, go to File, Export Media, and um, in general, I suggest HEVC, H265, um, for VR video, uh, unless you're doing something that uses a lot of solid colors or sort of cartoony um, colors. Uh, sometimes that can create 
artifacting in H.265, you might use H.264 in that case. I turned the target bitrate all the way up because this is very high resolution footage stretched all around the viewer in a sphere. I changed quality to highest because I've got time. Down below bitrate, make sure that the VR video section matches what you're trying to put out. Video as VR should be checked. It's monoscopic if it's 2D, stereo if it's 3D, and 360 if it's 360, or 180 in the horizontal if you're outputting 180. And then under the audio tab, I'm going to go down and ensure that channels says 4 and ambisonics is checked. Then we can queue and export, and that'll give us an MP4 that could be uploaded to YouTube or other places that can handle 360 video with ambisonic audio.